life. It gets busy. And how do we balance career, family, you know, life in general with joy, authenticity, and mindfulness? I am so excited today to be here with Elaine Smokler to talk from her experience being a psychotherapist, a mindful meditation teacher, and all things amazing because I really feel like we've had such great connection that she has so much to share with us, so much to give, and that knowledge we're sharing with you. So join me on this awesome, fantastical conversation we are about to have. <laughs> Elaine Lee, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I really have been looking forward to this conversation because so much of, the, of what goes through my mind as a parent, as someone who works extremely long and busy, has a busy life uh, with family and work and, and commitments, um, it's always trying to find balance, right? And and sometimes there's this notion of, oh, well, you just have to like create time. And I'm like, life doesn't really work that way. Life is so much, it, it, it's not a 50-50. I just don't believe that. And so I really wanted to have an episode where we could talk about how do we live authentically? How do we live whole as, as like bringing our whole selves, but also in a way where we can honor the things that we want to do and recognize like there isn't a nine to five. Like I've never lived my life in a nine to five way. And to be honest about that while finding balance, right? Like in balance isn't like the 50, 50, like that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. <laughs> good luck to us. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> so in you, can you share a little bit about your awesomeness? <laughs> well, actually, first I'd like to start and just touch on that word balance since you brought it up already. That as you pointed to, I think that's a really tricky word. You know, when I think it, it's sort of a sneaky word. We we can trick ourselves into thinking as you were pointing to this thing, this thing called balance. Oh, it's going to be this much on this side and this much on this side. I'm going to have this much sleep. I'm going to have this much water. I'm going to have this much yoga. I'm going to have this yeah. much yogurt. And then it's all going to be good. And and as you said, the reality of life is it's not like that at all. And then I think we end up actually in a struggle with ourselves because when it isn't like that, and then we slyly get into thoughts of how come I'm doing this wrong? What could I be doing better? I should be doing this. We get into a lot of shooting all over ourselves. Yes. And that to me is far more concerning than this false notion of balance, which whatever that means. Mm -hmm. To me, it's more about being connected to our inner selves. I think that's the biggest challenge that we are struggling with these days is that we're so out there focused. We're so focused on getting approval out there. Even the notion of balance, whose idea of balance is it? My idea or somebody out there's idea of yeah. watching me? Oh, do you think I'm balanced? Am I a good mother? When we begin to train ourselves to feel more connected to our own experience and be our own best friend and start to recognize moment by moment, what do I need right now? That's what I call balance. Mm. Balance is knowing what do I need right now? Do I need a hug? Do I need to go do a lot of work? Do I need to cuddle with my kids? Do I need to watch a really crappy show on Netflix? Like yeah. whatever it is, it's not a rule. It's more about riding that wave with self-trust. That's so beautifully put because it is like even the language is a limiter of balance that you think that you're always... 50 plus 50 equals 100, 80 plus 20 equals 100, right? And it's not necessarily that. It's like, what do we need? What do I need now? And to give yourself permission to let go of what we think it should be. Well, even like an image that just came to me as you were saying that, I, I thought about like going on a surfboard. So you would start off with a relatively balanced I've never been on a surfboard, yeah. so <laughs> forgive me if this is ridiculous what I'm saying, but what I imagine, that you start off with something fairly steady and balanced, but then the whole point of it is that the wave is picking you up yeah. 
and you're riding that experience, which has within it a whole bunch of different experiences, calm, rising, intensity, full blast, and then coming down again. And more to the point, I think that's the reality of what life is. It's more about riding the waves that come and go constantly versus trying to get some kind of, um, you know, soma like, you know, that's what chat GPT is more like, you know, like <laughs> as soon as you can remove all the emotions, then maybe, maybe you can get that. But I think it is more about learning how to ride that wave with joy. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to get kicked off of it and some, and then you just say, no problem. Get, ha, 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 get back going. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a part of what has helped me on so many levels in some of my darkest times has been knowing the skills of meditation, mindful, mindful, mindfulness and that, that practice. And when I wake up, whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes where I can just breathe and just create space and just observe my thoughts and be like, whoa, so much stuff happening here, but observing it and letting go. That buffer is so helpful in just how I embrace the rest of the day. And I just was like, that practice has been so critical. I, I, I'm curious about a word that you use yes. there that may be different than a word that I might share. Sure, sure, sure. And that word is buffer. Yeah. So, you know, uh, people, I can remember once somebody coming up to me at a party and they saying, oh, you're a mindfulness teacher. Okay. Like you're, you're into awareness. <laughs> <laughs> awareness. Like it's some hippie thing. You're into awareness, aren't you? And I said, why? What are you into? Unawareness? <laughs> I'm into unawareness. So I think it's really helpful to, when we, because mindfulness is out there in such a big way to know what are we talking about when we yeah. say mindfulness? Mindfulness is a awareness. Yeah. So you talked about watching your thoughts, being able to steady our minds enough with mindful practice that's about gathering our scattered thoughts yeah so that there's an ability to be the watcher now are we buffering ourselves from anything mm. i personally don't believe that the buffering is what we're doing i i think if anything mindfulness helps us become even more courageous to turn towards difficulty and say wahoo okay this is I guess this is called my life. Yeah. <laughs> here I go. Like, you're going there? Like, yeah, I'm going there. I'm going where it's most difficult. Part of why we do want to go there is this whole fight, flight, freeze mechanism in the brain that we're constantly, you say buffering. What are we buffering? That threat mechanism, that mm. feeling that we're like, no. Yeah, no. Like, okay, so astute. Buffering, yeah. buffering, buffering now yeah. versus... Yeah. The, the notion of riding that wave that says, what am I feeling? Oh, okay. I'm sitting, I'm starting my, my morning meditation. What am I feeling? Oh, anxiety is here. Oh, huh, okay. Noticing anxiety. What else am I feeling? Oh, my jaw's really tight. Oh, okay. Interesting. Jaw's really tight. Uh, no, I'm not breathing. I'm holding my breath. Hmm. Okay. Noticing that I'm holding my breath. Yeah. It's acknowledging how things are right now. Just like we would if we were taking care of a child. What's going on? How are you? What's happening? Yeah. That's what seems to calm the nervous system is being able to acknowledge. You okay? How are things? Well, I'm afraid of what's coming up today. Are yeah. You? That's okay. Yeah. That to me is like when I sit meditation and I've been practicing for over 30 years, yeah. which I know is amazing because I probably look up at 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> My mom would say I'm 25 times two. <laughs> or M18 plus, 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 plus. Uh, I've been practicing for a long, long time. So I've had the chance to explore what exactly is going on yeah. 10,000 hours of practice later. Yeah. Watching my mind be a circus. Yeah. Watching the circus of life not buffering from it, being able to be with it without being able to, I think of it as sort of being able to watch the movie rather than feeling like we're trapped by the movie. Yes, that's very key. Yeah. So it's not, we're not avoiding. That's why I'm just saying like the word buffering me says yeah. like I'm going to put my suit on and I'm going to go out there rather than 
I actually want to be so open yeah. to everything so that I'm right on the spot to be there for the things that I wouldn't notice if I was buffered. Yeah. Just to say. That's no, my- I don't. Listen, I totally appreciate it. I will say a big part of why I really wanted to have this conversation is as a parent, as someone who's got two kids and very full lives, I'm always like wanting to be present for my kids. And then I'm like, oh, hey, there's not enough hours in the day to do everything. So what are those skills and what are those tools and tips? And, you know, for a while, I like being able to create space in the morning was like rare, right? Because you're as a, as a parent to newborns, you're like, oh, like no sleep. And it's like, I want to get every moment of sleep. Right. But when I am able to take a moment and start off my day by noticing how I'm feeling and noticing those thoughts, like I have 800 thoughts coming through. I didn't notice that. Like, it's like a flood. Yes. And then allowing my mind to file it, like to say, okay, observed. Yes. And I, I tell myself, okay, oh, I didn't know that was happening. Yes. You know, and it, just even noticing it, not doing anything with it, gave me this peace, sort of. Like, gave me space. Lovely. And so when I don't do it, I feel it. Right. I really, like, go, oh. And so I appreciate that notice and that astuteness of, like, oh, how are you feeling today? You know, like, the rush of the day and how you start. And... I talk with so many parents who are working long hours. And when I say working, it's not just work. It's like life and all of the, you know, things that come with it. And I was like, it would be really great to think about tools, tips in terms of how you can fold it into your day to day. So it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. So it doesn't have to feel like I'm, I'm just like getting by because I think, there's so many parents who I know and so many people who I know in general who do feel like that. And, and the, the pace of, of time, people are, are rushing, the way people drive, the way people consume media. Even like, you know, I had a conversation earlier with someone who said that, did you know that in music they're moving the chorus up sooner so that people can get to it? <laughs> what's happening it's a time warp like you know like 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 i just almost feel like if things are spinning faster and faster and we're hamsters on a wheel we need to stop that like maybe stopping is not going to be realistic but how can we build in things to help us and i don't want to say balance but to find that peace or to find like being present well you you said stop a couple of times and there's although of course nothing stops yeah you know that's just not nature and everything is on, yeah. is constantly on the move but there is even a practice called the stop practice that sometimes we use in mindfulness as a way to do what to anchor ourselves in the present moment so let's come back to something you just said about what's going on with people when they're super busy first of all it seems to me that one of the things that happens is that we get super involved in the doing mode and you might think well of course we're doing there's a lot of stuff to get done of course yeah. we're doing but we might think get the kids to uh get the kids to soccer get the kids to skating get yeah. the kids to piano they got to be this they got to be yeah. chess chess champions I mean, but what does the evidence show about what it is that children really need yeah is is it all this doing and all these lessons and all this tutoring yeah. is that really what creates healthy children when we're looking at a mental health crisis in children right now I suspect, and based on the conversations, I have uh, I am a psychotherapist, but children are not my specialty, but from the colleagues that I've talked to uh, in this area, child psychiatrists, et cetera, the information that I get is connection is what's needed. Time just to be together it doesn't have to be so busy. It doesn't have to be so active. It really just needs to be more connected, caring, looking in their eyes, a moment of contact, even if what they see is Mommy is super, super busy, but if they feel they're not just sending them from lesson to lesson to lesson mm-hmm. or this to that, mm-hmm. but there's a sense of connecting, yeah. going to the park or doing whatever, that seems to be what is providing kids with the stability that they need. They want to feel connected, part of something, part of the family community. Yeah. More than doing a billion things. Yeah. And what you said 
connecting and community, I feel like that's almost the secret sauce of healing. I think so too. Being a part of a community is is important. Feeling a sense of belonging, feeling seen, right? Like the presence. For sure. That's I think that's what people crave the most is to be seen and known. I mean, spoiler alert, we're all dead at the end. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, we have this pocket of time that we are on earth and what is it we're doing? I suspect if we were to actually live our lives from our deathbed back, we might look at some of the choices we make and go, who cares about yeah. so many of those things that I'm striving for? Maybe we would accept less if we could have more time with our families, more time of peace, more time hanging out and just having fun. Living in Toronto is very expensive. So I don't mean to be glib and say, hey, everybody quit your jobs and hang out with your kids. So that's why I said balance may not be a realistic idea in terms of what do we mean by balance? It may, you stay, still may need to work many hours. It's quality. What's that moment that you're spending with your child? Yeah. Even if it's one moment, can you be there? So I said the stop practice. Can I explain yes, please, that? Please, please, please. So the stop practice is one that I find really interesting just because it points in the direction. The, it's an acronym because mindfulness loves acronyms. It stands for stop, i.e. the moment that you feel that you're just buzzing, busy, overwhelmed, too many things are going on and you're no longer tracking. Give yourself that moment to just pause, stop even just for a moment. Okay. Recognizing, whoa, the T of the stop practice is take a breath. Now, when we take a breath, especially if we elongate the out breath, so like maybe in for five, count in for five and out for seven, we're actually calming the parasympathetic. We're triggering the parasympathetic nervous system and calming, bringing physiological calm to the body. We're also interrupting our thoughts maybe a bit because we're focusing on a breath. So we've stopped, we've taken a breath, okay? And then the O of the stop practice is observe. That's where we move into that curious observer notion of, okay, what thoughts are here right now? I have so much to do, I'm not gonna get it all done. I've got to shop, I've got to do this, I've got to pick the kids up so you can just notice what's going on in your mind. I have 5 million appointments today, I'm not gonna get them all done and the traffic is terrible and I don't know what we're gonna eat for dinner and when's the last time I saw my wife and blah, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. So we stop and we go, Okay, so that's the chatter going on. Yeah. What's the emotional charge of that chatter? The emotions are handled so differently by the body than the thoughts are. The thoughts we can go, huh, what evidence am I using to prove to myself that thought is true, that the sky is falling. Yeah. But emotions are a chemical consequence of fight, flight, freeze often, or a joyful moment. And so we actually need to acknowledge what emotion just got triggered. Just label it with one word, anxiety, sadness, joy, whatever it is. It's what you said about being seen. The emotions need to be seen as well, like felt. And then we check in with the body. Oh yeah, what just happened when my mind went crazy with all those thoughts? My shoulders went up, my jaw tightened, I stopped breathing, my fish clenched. So we're observing all of these things. And I find that one of the fascinating things is we don't have to do anything, just acknowledging observing seems to you can tell me if this is your experience because you're also a practitioner it seems to just acknowledging seems to just already calm things down a bit like okay i just wanted to make sure you heard me anger is here okay we see you anger thank you okay yeah. no i, I mean and that's sorry the p of the stop practice is then proceed with greater wisdom so proceed. stop take a breath observe thoughts emotions and how the body is responding allowing you the space to proceed with greater wisdom because you gathered your scattered mind, your present, instead of hanging out in the past and the future so much, you've at least gathered yourself together to be here now and go, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. I see you as a teacher and I learn from that as well. Like, I mean, I, you know, I feel that is such a valuable tool of just stop, take a breath, observe prepare. I, I do it constantly because I am a human. Yeah. So even though I have practiced close to 10,000 hours, my hair is the signal of warning contents under pressure. Like red, you know, that's yeah. my way of signaling to the world, you know, like I'm ready to go kaboom. 
Why? So I manage my emotions. I manage my volatility. It's mm. not that I'm a peaceful person, whatever that means. Mm. I'm a person mm. who has a wide range of emotions, but I am able to be there and meet them before they do damage to other people. Yeah. And hopefully. I, hopefully. <laughs> I think that that is so important and so relevant, so timely, because if all of us could take that, because I feel whenever I go out and engage, like, you know, I'm driving and you see people, how they drive or they cut off and they speed ahead and you feel like, wow, like it feels like people are just moving so fast. Like on autopilot, right? They're like, you can feel like going on in their heads and they're just like, Whoa. And there's something where when I, when I used to teach and we would go into the classroom and students, there would be this energy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa, everybody, there's a lot of energy happening right now. And I would say, can you just take two minutes to breathe? Nice. And I literally, I, every single time I've done it, I could feel the electricity in the air go, go. And I think they could feel it too. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, okay, like we just need to like stop. I mean, I didn't know about that acronym, but like, that's just, sometimes I would have to be like, okay, I just need two minutes. Like, I don't, you know, I just need to just take a deep breath and just take 20 deep breaths and then go. Like if, you know, people are time, like limited for time, but I always felt that really helpful. And when I did that with the class, I just remember people like, oh, and then they could be present. And that that's the one thing, like people being like zombies. Well, let me, if, can I just point Please? to something around Please. that? So if you imagine that, does it make sense to you that you, most people you meet spend a significant amount of their time thinking about the past or the future, like exactly. catastrophic thoughts about the future or what am I going to yeah. do later or some sad thing that happened in the past or some way their parents yeah. hurt them or some yes, 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 painful yes. thing, right? So my experience is most people, many people do not spend a lot of time in the present. Yeah. And that our thoughts are amazing time travelers, mm -hmm. which is great. We're not here to vilify the mind. Lovely. Good work. Um, but there are consequences to hanging out in the past because it's usually the negative. It's not usually, why does everybody think I'm so wonderful? Right. Yeah. Why yeah, yeah. did everyone think I was so wonderful? And I bet everyone's going to think I'm wonderful. It's generally not what people think, especially if their mood is low. So our thoughts are usually focusing on the negative and we're triggering all these negative chemicals and et cetera. You, you, you're inviting people to bring their attention to the breath. So what's, whether you, you know it or not, one of the things that you're doing is you're inviting them to take all of this energy that they're feeding these whirling minds going, now what's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. And you're saying, okay, I want you to pull some of that. And instead I want you to feed something that's only happening in the present moment. It's called breathing. So for that two minutes, they're just right there. If as much as they can be, even if it's only for two seconds, because they're yeah. mostly thinking and that. They're just there feeling their breath and even taking that little tiny break from constant thought can be enough to dial down our nervous system. So there's so many things about anchoring attention in the present. I think sometimes people get confused about is the breath some mystical, magical thing? Yes, it keeps you alive. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> you might want to keep it around, but, but it's also like a way for us to just land in our senses, mm -hmm. which are only experienced in the present. If we could be more in our senses, taste, touch, smell, whatever it is, then we're here for longer and more able to work out the problems that are needing to be handled in the present. Mm -hmm. we're, we're gathering our energy instead of splitting it into three. Like, yeah. no wonder we're so exhausted. We're living the past, present, and the future all at the same time. It's so true. I mean, you're, you know, as a psychotherapist, as a mindful meditation teacher and life coach, like you bring so much like into each moment. Uh, I care deeply about being alive and wanting to actually have a life before I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say that what I do is I try to I try to live as much as I can and live from my deathbed back so that I say to myself every day, if this is it, if this is all I did, if this is all I got, yeah. 
I feel okay. I did well. I, I'm happy with the choices I made. I did the best I could. That doesn't mean that I don't stumble or I don't yeah. do things that I regret or mm-hmm. say things that mm-hmm. I regret or have thoughts that I It's just, I think it's helpful to remember we're just people trying to live our lives as yeah. well as we can, all of us. And when you say that, I was just, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about all the many lives that you have led and all the many <laughs> jobs that you have done. And there's a, like one of the reasons why I'm also really excited to talk to you about is you have lived such a full life. You've done so many things that so many people are like, if I just did one of those things, that's off my bucket list. Right. Uh, but, but you, you, for many people who I know who are very career driven or who are very much focused on professional success, you've actually done you've reached the highest highs and you've got, okay, I'm going to try something different. And you do this like, okay, 360, literally or 180, where you're like, okay, I'm going to try something different. Um, and I, I thought that if there was any insight or wisdom into that, that journey of professional growth and main, and, and learnings. Well, we're we're talking about it from many different angles. Like, first of all, I view life as a giant banquet table. I may have said that to you on the phone. And I, I want to taste as many dishes at life's banquet table as possible. Like, that's my personal experience of life. So part of why I've had so many jobs is that I'm just so hungry for experience. So as soon as I get good enough or, you know, high enough in a job that I feel like, okay, I got it. And I'm like, okay, next. Because I want, and that's one of the things that you and I connected with when we were talking on the phone was the fun of, of this many minutes on planet earth. What do I want to do with it? So I, I, you know, I've been an actor, I've done, you know, I've been on screen, I've done lots and lots of commercials. I've been on boards of directors. I've, I've uh, been cleaning lady. I've been uh, a producer. (laughs) I've been I, 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 I think I, I told you I had like 75 different job streams yeah. and, and it sounds ridiculous, except, except I actually counted them one day. And like, I, I produced a bunch of shows, like hundreds of shows. And I've done so, so, so many different rich, really rich things. And, and they've really, I worked in a pulp and paper mill with thousands of men. I was like one of a hundred women and there's like 10,000 men working as a laborer in a pulp and paper mill to pay my way through university. So I've done so many different kinds of things. Yeah. And coming back to the notion of community, I feel that one of the things that I've learned is people are just people. That was the most, maybe that was the most important thing I learned is, uh, you know, I came from a more intellectual family and it was really helpful for me to go and explore the world and see, oh, it doesn't matter if you have an education, you know, <laughs> sorry kids, I don't need to tell you it's not good. It doesn't matter if you have an education. Cut that part out. It's not the only thing. There's millions of ways to get education. You can get educated by life. You can get educated by experiences. As I started to meet more and more different types of people, because I was exposing myself to different types of jobs, my own view of life started to get richer and richer. And I saw, and it also made me more adaptive. So I could see, oh, okay. So you could do it this way. Or you could do it that way. Or you could do it this way. So that meant I wasn't ever afraid that anybody was going to fire me. Because I always felt, A, why would you? (laughs) I'm awesome. (laughs) But if that's because I'm a very confident person. But B, my feeling is, oh, I'll go and figure it out on my own. Like, I'll start my own company, which I've also done. I'll start my own company or I'll go join somebody else's company or somebody will headhunt me. Like, I've always found my attitude is a huge, like, when I coach people, I'm trying to explain to them how much the energy, I know that's sort of a woo-woo word, but when I say energy, I mean, I said, have you ever walked into a room and you can see who the most powerful person in the room is, even if they don't speak? And my colleagues or my clients might say, you know, yeah. And I said, it's because it's an energy thing. You just feel that they're sitting in their power. They don't have to. And that's what we're learning how to do is sit in our power Mm -hmm. so that we're not trying to impress anybody. We're so impressed with ourselves. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't mean in a big ego way. I mean, like, you're, you're just like, like, hey, you're like, I like you myself. are all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> and I find that the more positively I view myself, 
Because who knows me better than me? My experience is people follow suit. If I think I'm amazing, who are the people to deny that? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, if I don't think I'm amazing, I feel like people see that right away. They see it in my eyes. They hear it in my voice. They see my hesitation. So part of what I recommend to people is be confident about what you bring to the table. Know your, know your beauty, know your value. If you don't know what you're bringing, that is going to make it difficult for you to find richness and for you to find connection. If you're hoping that someone is going to give you approval or tell you you're good enough, you're already on a weak place. If you go in radiant, amazed, looking around, how do I want to, like, how am I going to leap into this? In yeah. what way is most exciting to me? The worst that happens is they fire you. <laughs> well, now you might say that's easy to say. But I think that is the end of the day, aren't we trying to be happy enough with our lives so that other rather than just working, 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 dying. Yeah. It's like when you said, I want to live, I want to be alive. It's, you know, not just like breathing, but to not to exist in this world, experiencing feeling and being present. And there's a comment that you said earlier about it feels like people are in autopilot. Right, the day to day grudge of, you know, and, and it's one of these things where it's very easy to kind of go, oh, I just have to do this, right? But every morning when my kid wakes up at five, I actually love cuddling her and it makes me really happy. And people are like, oh, you've been up since early? I'm like, aren't you tired? I'm like, that's what coffee is for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But well, it truly <laughs> is. Like, but but I do find those moments where I rise with her and I put her to bed, like really, it, it kind of completes my day. Like it just feels very, like, I'm like, oh, it feels good. Well, she's very in the moment, presumably, yeah. right? Yeah. She, How old did oh, you yeah. say she is? Two years and like three months. Yeah. So she doesn't really have a choice except to be in the moment. She yeah, doesn't, yeah, yeah. She does not learn not to be in the moment yeah. yet. Probably mostly, mostly. Yeah. So I could also see like just being able to connect with that being right. who's so in the moment yeah. brings you to that feeling of like, <sighs> for that moment, yeah. you're just right there with what's yeah. really important. <laughs> then you're going out into the world. Now, the thing about challenges, so like everybody's got super challenges. We, I like the metaphor of roughage in your diet. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. if you had a smooth diet, unless you've got some, you know, illness, it's not healthy for you. You need a certain amount of roughage in your diet to yep. move things through, right? It's the same with life. We don't want to have no challenges. We want to have a certain amount of challenges to grow, to figure things out. It's okay mm -hmm. that things are challenging. That's not the that's not the stress issue. The stress issue is not how challenging things are, although they are very, 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 very challenging. It's how do we meet those moments in presence so that we're like always looking for the best way to adapt. Okay, I can't go this way. It's like Uber or, you know, Waze is always telling you the other route you can go that's the easier route, you know, like, okay, don't go that way. There's a traffic jam, go that way. Yeah. That's how I see life. It's like, oh, don't go that way. You gotta go that way. Figure out a different way. That's the adaptive way when we can be present in the moment, enjoy what's there to be enjoyed, like being with your daughter for a cuddle in the morning. Yeah. And then go at your life like a game, like, okay, how am I going to do this today? Because I have lots and lots and lots of challenging days. I'm human. I have lots of illness and people challenged in my family and a lot of people I need to take care of. And it's not that it's not up and down in terms of my own emotions or how I feel, people dying, you know, those are painful things. But when we stay close to the moment, then we're really there for the people. You're there for your daughter. You're not going to look back when she's 10 and go, oh my gosh, I missed one to 10. I wasn't there. Yeah, just no, space that's, 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 I spaced that out. That's completely one to 10. my fear. Like, I mean, and that's the one thing where my children, I'm so grateful to have children because I feel like they're a constant reminder of, okay, wait, why am I doing this? Does this really right. matter? Like, right. it really, like, I think it was a game changer for me in a positive way, having kids to go, oh, right. They, they are an honest mirror. They can't help it. 
Like, and I'm like, oh, you got me. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm like, okay. Brutally honest. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, it's, it's wonderful. And it also shows us what we're holding on to, because if we feel that pinch of ouch, when someone is honest, it's for me, that's when I look at myself and go, oh, that's interesting. I must be holding on to something there or it wouldn't hurt so much that that person said that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that was like sucker punch. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I feel really humbled by that. Like, I feel like there have been moments where my kids have been the teacher and I'm like, oh, right. Let me just think about that for a moment, you know? When I, I, I feel like I view everybody as my teacher. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Right? Like I think I really do go through life being curious about everybody. Yeah. Even if I just have a one second encounter with somebody, I always feel, well, I have the choice to be present and connect with this person even for one second, if I'm able, or I relinquish that choice because I'm too involved in my mind. Mm -hmm. And when I think about what is the purpose of life and my whole desire for us to have more community and connection, even if it's just pop-up community, like one second. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it's about like constantly just checking in. Hi, friendly, (laughs) saying hello, whatever, not being mean, all of that stuff. That's been an absolute common thread that I found like not being mean being kind being aware just like I mean not being aware like you're like ooh, like but just like hey how are you doing like I notice you like noticing feelings like and that's a conversation that I've had with so many people and I wanted to talk about you know when you said about that power like oh can you see who's the most powerful person is in that room and to relate that to the self and we talked about like confidence like when you feel good you know, it exudes and people might not even know it. Like it's unconsciously uh, presented. Do you have tips or like thoughts around how people can love themselves and be more confident? Yeah, sure. So first I think you have to recognize it's similar to the stop practice. You have to recognize what you're saying to yourself. You know, if, because part of why mindfulness is so interesting to me is that it really brings in neuroscience. You know, mindfulness has the backing of science. So in neuroscience, we can see that if secretly every day I'm looking in the mirror and going, you disgust me, you fat pig, you're so ugly, you're so stupid, no one likes you, I don't like you. (laughs) Which I think a lot of people are secretly saying to themselves Mm -hmm. when they look in the mirror, even if they don't hear those words, variations on that theme. I, I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm not going to do. We're creating these pathways in our brain constantly that are making that the default of how we view the world. Yeah. So we're sending that message out into the world that we are that. Whereas, so the first thing is to recognize what are you saying to yourself every day and change that message, not change it. Like I'm going to force myself to have another message, but the day that I, my, me personally, the day that I thought to myself, I would never walk down the street and kick a child I saw there, but I wouldn't hesitate to kick the so-called inner child in me because I seem to be doing it all the time. Yeah. And I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, wow, that's so interesting. Why is it I feel that I could kick myself, but I wouldn't kick another person? And that actually was the beginning for me of the journey of starting to be curious about how to be kinder to myself and and why I might want to include myself in humanity rather than everybody else. I'll be kind to everybody else but me, of course, because I'm a monster. So the first thing is recognition. My motto is recognition is liberation, one of my mottos. So if I recognize what I'm saying to myself, then I can stop, take a breath, just notice and say, honey, which I even did to myself today because I do it every day, I love you. You're beautiful. You're my, like I touch myself. Now, you could say, why would we touch ourselves? So part of the exciting, so the, so first I talked about neuroscience. We're talking about the messages we're sending ourselves unintentionally that are creating these negative defaults in our brain that have a chemical consequence. 
because they're throwing us into the threat mechanism and we're dumping adrenaline and cortisol into our bloodstream constantly because we're warring with ourselves. We can induce the flow of some of those positive chemicals like oxytocin, which is our schnaudies, you know, it's the bonding chemical. So self-touch is one way that we are able to, it's noted that we can do that. So I might place my hand over my heart area if that feels good, or I might put a hand on my cheek if that feels good, and it does, or on my <laughs> forehead, yeah. or on my head, or, or give myself a hug. As silly as those things sound, they induce the flow of oxytocin, which is the bonding chemical, and that is then creating a more uh, conducive place in our in our internal habitat chemically for well-being. Yeah. So first we're noticing the messages that we're sending to ourselves as if, yeah, as somebody said to me years ago, Elaine, you sound like you've got a whole police force in your head. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> who else is going to protect the world from me? Like, of course I do. So it never even occurred to me that that might be something to consider that that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So I am very conscious of how I hold myself love myself, speak to myself, mm -hmm. self-touch as a way for me to comfort myself, feel calm. And uh, there's a Dan Siegel, who's a, I think he's a, a neuropsychiatrist. He um, has written lots and lots of wonderful books. And he talk, uses a, a, a framing that we want to be safe, seen, soothed, and secure. Mm -hmm. not, safe, necessarily, seen, not necessarily in that order. Like, probably seen, sued, you know, say yeah, yeah. whatever. Like those four ideas, safe, mm -hmm. seen, sued, secure, as a way for us to have a kind of, so how do we get to those things? Well, first I have to feel like I can trust myself, that I'm not going to beat the heck out of me. Mm. That's part of safety because otherwise I'm constantly watching for me to kick me. Yeah. So first I have to be my own. Okay, i got to watch how I'm talking to myself, do some kind touch, including a self hug, which is wonderful. I love touching myself and hugging myself. And it's, we have these young parts of ourselves that just really need a little bit of support. And, yeah. And, um, even just those things I think could be so helpful. And then, and then coming back to the power part, this is the act. So you said, I've, I said, I've had many jobs. I also have been an actor and I've done lots of you know, commercials and acting yeah. stage and stuff like that. So some of the acting part of it is being able to be present on stage so that you're, you know, you want to, you want to have presence. Have presence yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the point. So being in the moment is the way to have presence. And so sometimes you would do something like taking a breath. We talked already about that's being in the present and feeling your body sitting here because we're so trapped in our thoughts. It's like, we don't have a body. Yeah. We're time traveling sure. and don't know it. So feel your body here. Take a breath, feel maybe extending that out breath. So breathing in for five and out for seven, possibly doing some kind self touch, noticing how I'm talking to myself. And then maybe even just realizing that I find it helpful to connect with my own inner radiance. Mm, so I have wow. to sometimes imagine that I have a sun inside, like S-U-N, S-U-N, yeah. inside of my chest cavity. And I have the sense that that sun is shining and beaming and resplendent and shining from the front and shining from the back. And then I start to feel like I am that shining sun. Mm. And instead of it being about an ego radiance, I just feel like I'm the sun and the radiance is coming from me and I'm walking through the world like a radiant sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. I think that's so wonderful because, you know, you shared with me this wonderful article that you wrote about how to be your own best friend. I've shared that with so many people. I'm like, oh, I'm at this is such a good article. Nice. It's so great because there were so many, like, not like, huge moments, but like things that people would say, and I'm like, you need to be your own best friend. Mm -hmm. Like you just need to like be kind to yourself. And I don't think that's like woo woo or hokey because I actually believe that, that, that 
it's easy to have be that negative rhetoric going through your head and we have to stop it. And there's a chemical consequence to that negative, negative. Like when you say woo woo, look at the science. The science is if we feel under threat, even from ourselves, the threat mechanism was there to keep us from being eaten from a lot by a lion, as it were, you know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't recognize a psychological threat as not one that requires the muscles to shorten so you can run faster yeah, yeah, yeah. or adrenaline. So we're living in this threat, which is stealing all the nutrients we need to thrive. That's just the way the body operates. So this is chemical, physiological. Yeah. This is not a oh, Hallmark card. I'm going to be nice to myself. This is the option is I'm in threat and all the chemical implications, right. chronic illness, chronic problems that come from so much cortisol and adrenaline constantly being pumped into the bloodstream. So even if you don't like the idea of being your own best friend, you could say, be your own best chemical plant. Yeah. I mean, like you are what you think you are. It's like the saying of like, you are what you eat, but this is really the science behind you are what you think because it's the laws of attraction in so many ways. Like I always find it so interesting. Like, Whoa, how did that just happen? Like, I just put that up. What? Like, you know, it's like, is it magic? It's like putting it out there and then something like, a miracle short of a miracle but something positive will happen like there have been so many situations where my mom's like just have faith and just believe and i think whether that's a spirituality you know um or or however one wants to interpret it but i will say i am a believer like you know when i've had a thought i'm like okay what if we could make it work by doing this this or this instead of saying oh it's gonna be so hard to find someone to do this or oh it's gonna be so hard to do this like i just don't think that way but i i'm like oh like meeting you and having this wonderful connection with you. I was like, what? That's like, I couldn't have asked for someone more awesome to be able to bring that psychotherapy background, that mindful meditation. Cause I knew for me, I was like, that has helped me in so many ways throughout life and a practice that I want to get better at. Right. Because I think it's, I've fallen out of practice. I've come back into practice and I'm like, I feel so much better when I do it, but I want to share that. So when you say fall out of practice, some things that I want to mention is it can be tempting to think that we have to sit on a cushion or follow our breath. And yeah. that's what practice is. But that's why I mentioned the senses. Yeah. So the senses, the only time you can ever smell is when? When you're alive? No. Can you smell anything but right now? No. Can you no. touch anything except for in right now? No. Or feel touch? Can you yeah. hear anything except in memory yeah. right now? Yeah. So our senses are direct mm, portals to the present moment. So what's handy about that is we talk about the notion of formal and informal practice. So yes, of course, you could sit on a cushion. I've, I told you I've done almost 10,000 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. But you could also be really present brushing your teeth. You could be in the shower and feel the water on yeah. you. You don't have to add extra time. You could have your cup of tea. Yeah. I didn't get a cup of tea, but because I was afraid I'd have to pee too much, but <laughs> spoiler alert. But um, you could just take that cup of tea and be present even to one sip of the heat or the cool. Mm -hmm. That's putting you in your senses, creating a connection to nowness. Anything like that is practice. So rather than saying, oh, darn it, I didn't get to practice, you're sitting in your car, you feel your butt mm -hmm. connecting with the yeah. seat of the car, you feel your hands on the wheel, and you let yourself be present rather than distracted. That is practice. So practice mm -hmm. is about being here yeah. now. Yeah. The other thing that I wanted to bring in that I hope would be helpful for people, because I, I love mentioning it, is something called the HALT check-in. Mm -hmm. which I think maybe originally came from AA. And I just feel it's so helpful. So when we're talking about in the workplace or at home, when people get really stretched and wonder, what can I do to help myself not be so reactive or, or burn yeah. out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So HALT stands for hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I feel this is so crucial. I teach it everywhere because before you try to do meditation, before you try to do anything else, before you try to do anything else, you could ask yourself, when was the last time I ate? Oh, is my blood sugar low? Because if it is, <laughs> I'm going to be out of it. That's got nothing to do with meditation. Yeah. 
Do I already feel distressed about something? That's the angry. Did somebody mm. already? So I'm here talking to you, but meanwhile, I just had a conversation with so-and-so and I'm sitting here and I'm like, ah, it's nothing to do with you. I'm just right. carrying my anger from a previous or my strong emotion. Yeah. So just noticing, oh, okay, right. This is not a fresh starting spot. Lonely. What does lonely mean? Lonely could mean a thousand people telling you they love you, but for whatever reason, you feel all alone in some decision you have to make. Right. Or some difficulty that even though people are around you, maybe you feel it, but nobody knows what it's like to be me right now. Tired. We live in an over underslept world. How many decisions are skewed by exhaustion? Yeah, that's fair. So 100%. just ordinary, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I think before you get any trying to do anything fancier than that, start there. Yeah. No, and I think stop. And halt, yeah. right? Like I think the two takeaways are, are, are really helpful because I've so many times where you know in my family will be like, "Are you hangry?" Right, right. Like that's our term. Like, did you eat? Hold on, let's stop before you have that critical meltdown. Did you eat? Oh, oh no, I already. Eat. And and I think that is really halt being something like every day we should be thinking about. Oh yeah, because think yeah. of how many difficulties we get into with each other where we want to process an emotion mm. that isn't really about this. Mm. It's really just like I'm overwhelmed or I'm underfed or I'm underslept, but I'm going to, but now you're in my sight. Yeah. So I got you in my like, sight. So you are the you're one going to get, get it. You're going to get it. Yeah. And our partners are often those people, yeah. you know, the ones who we feel, okay, well, you're hopefully not going to leave right away. So yeah, like, you're um, right there. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, you know, we're, Again, awareness is really just why would we choose unawareness? Yeah. What's so good about unawareness? Unawareness means being spaced out and autopilot. What's significant about that is when, so some people might think, of course I live in autopilot. I have so much going on. It's easier for me to be out of it and just get through my day. Mm -hmm. However, when the evidence suggests that when our mood is already low, yeah. if we're hanging out in autopilot, it's not neutral. It's defaulting to the negative. It's not just like mm. I'm spacing out, I'm in neutral. It's like I'm spacing out and that seems to be a very conducive place for like, why does everybody hate me? Right. Why is my life sucking? Why do I always have financial problems? Why is nothing ever work out for me? Uh, <laughs> that's what's right. so happening. is not very good to be Autopilot, in. it's helpful to be able to do some things, but if we are lost in autopilot, then we are more susceptible to things like depressive relapse. That's a very, like, in, like that's important to be aware of. I hope so. <laughs> like, no, I mean, I, I think that, like, as I observe interactions, like just as a complete outsider, not aware, it's it just feels like people are in shorter fuses and things are just, very it feels like the conversations you hear or the clips the quips that people have and it's like let's be kind to ourselves right like and it starts with the self but also you've given some great um advice and insight for what the self can do right and like that loneliness piece where you could be surrounded by a thousand people who say that they love you but you feel really alone in your decision so as as someone who, like, if you cared about someone, you saw them feeling like not themselves or acting depressed, like, or, you know, like you, you see someone you care about in that way, what can you do to be, to connect? Well, you said it earlier and I thought it was really beautiful. We, you know, part of awareness is of course, we're aware of ourselves and we're also allowing the possible, the, you know, the reality that there is no such thing as being here all by ourselves because we are totally interconnected with one another. And so for me to either say the words or find some way to look at you and just say, how you doing? Yeah. Like even when I walked in here today, yeah. you know, I made, I, I asked you a question because I heard you sigh in a yeah. certain way. And yeah. I, yeah. so I just asked you, Hey, got a lot going on right now. Yeah. And so I find that taking even one, like 20 seconds sometimes just to say to somebody, how you doing? Yeah. Like, or, you know, you okay? Do you need anything? Can I get you some water? Like, 
it doesn't have to be a big deal, but I, I feel like if we just Oh, I bet you're happy. You know, I bet this is probably a busy day. I bet this is a rough day or like whatever it is. I find like there's the tiniest amount of time sometimes that we can. Some stranger calls me on the phone. Like I always try to recognize that person is a person and this is a moment for connection. Yeah. This is, there's no non moments of connection. Every moment is an opportunity to bring kindness, even for a second. The value of that is not only does it make the other person feel usually feel better, often that can change the world and that <laughs> makes you feel better. Like, yeah. I feel better when I ask you how you are. Yeah. I feel better when I'm not just in my own silo, yeah. thinking only of myself. The minute I check in with you or anybody else around here, all of a sudden I am part of a community. Yeah. I'm not just the stranger. I'm already, I've included myself. Yeah. That's powerful. I, that act, that act, like, I mean, kind of coming full circle, community, creating connections and community. Like, wait, Hey, how are you? Yeah. How's it going for two yeah. seconds? My, yeah. It might just be like, you're standing at a, like I, in elevators, like I talk to people all the time, bathroom lineups, you know? <laughs> Always, always, always. Like, I just like, why not? I'm standing here anyhow. Like, usually I'm just like, so how you doing? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. I know people are like, eh, just, but it, this is the thing. Like, I actually, oftentimes in spaces, you look at people and the phone becomes a bit of a crutch. Sure. And I like, I try to put my phone away. I'm like, hey. And then it's like, in lineups, I love chatting with people because it's so interesting. It is. It's like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Like, and it's, I'm curious, right? And I'm like, oh, that's, that's really cool. The beautiful thing about practicing in elevators and lineups is it shows you that you don't, at least shows me, I don't have to give everything. I don't yeah, have yeah, to make yeah. that person my new best friend. Absolutely. But, so rather than thinking, oh, I can't possibly connect with people because I don't have the time. It's like every day I'm doing things and bumping into yeah. people. And if I'm, if you think like molecules, if I'm bouncing off of you with a bit of a smile or some friendliness or a hello, or I'm looking at you, yeah. instead of you feeling, <sighs> I see people, people tell me all the time, oh, you really made my day. Now I'm not, it's not that I'm trying to exactly make their day. I'm trying to be part of this community that I believe in. Yeah. Because if I'm not creating it, how could it exist? Yeah. Like I want it, but I don't want to be part of it. Yeah. How does that work? No, I want to have community, but I don't like make it happen. Yeah. Go ahead, make it happen. Could you? Like yeah. I am feeling, well, if I want it, I, it's up to me to make it happen. And then I find that life for me, when friends come out with me, it's pretty funny. I said, it's like a movie, right? And I'm like, yeah. I said, cause everywhere I go, I talk to people, they talk to me, I'm smiling. They're, they, they just want to interact everywhere. It's true. It's just, Absolutely right? It's just true. like, then you're just like having fun going through life, even when it's Absolutely. difficult. You're oh, sharing totally, the pain. Yeah. Oh, the fire. Oh, yeah, I know. Are you okay? Stay safe. Okay, thank you. You too. Uh, yeah, no, it's, but this is a part of why, like, I really appreciated our connection because I think that zeal for life of just connecting, it's a check in and it makes it enjoyable. It makes starting new career paths, starting new journeys, new chapters, really like, oh, it's a vignette, <laughs> you know, and, and connection. And, and coming back to the surf metaphor. So, you know, how I said like it, it starts here and then yeah. it rises. Yeah. So beginnings and endings are like that too. So let's say I've started all these different jobs. Of course, when I start, there's that awkward I'm the new person. Yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah. Nobody knows me. So it's, it's not even a super extroverted, friendly person like me still has the same issues most people have with beginnings and endings. You know, we all, so if I could notice that, okay, I'm starting something new so that I want to be really kind to myself and make sure that I know this is, this is, I'm a bit anxious or I'm a bit nervous or that's okay. So be kind to myself, recognize yeah. it's normal to be a bit nervous yeah. something new yeah and ending you know maybe we're going to feel a bit heartbroken or like i don't want to say goodbye to my co or my company got sold and now we're yeah. not you know and i don't want to say goodbye to those people and so i think it's also important for us to acknowledge our humanness by feeling our feelings and that includes sometimes sadness is here sometimes joy is here 
whatever it is, we're staying close to the human experience so that we are not automatons. Yeah. And it takes courage because then you're alive to life's technicolor. And on one hand, it is intense because the vividness of life is very intense. Yeah. But compared to the dullness and the and living this, I, I just don't see how you could compare it. Absolutely. But I think everybody has to choose for themselves what, what their tolerance is for how much they can handle. It's true. And that's all contextual. But yeah. I think the the nugget stop and halt. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Those both sound so negative. No, no. no. <laughs> like, stop and halt. But that doesn't sound very funny. They breathe life. They breathe life and community and connection, right? And and it's just an observation and an awareness um, of, of self and relation to others, being kind to yourself. Like it actually starts when we, you know, you see lots of people with these shirts, like be kind, well, be kind to yourself. Let like be the mirror, be kind to yourself. Um, so one of the things obviously that we've kind of talked about is being red and you know, the, <laughs> like the color, the passion, the, you know, like you have this beautiful bro- necklace brooch that I think is a heart, right? Yeah. Like, I love it um, because I want to tie it into your favorite quote, which is the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. And it's from the song Nature Boy, uh, which is a lyric written by Eden Abes for uh, the jazz standard, Nature Boy, and actually comes, like, was made famous by Nat King Cole. I love Nat King Cole. So I just thought this line is really great. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Okay. So I'll, I'll share a difficult moment in my life that brought that awareness of that quote, because there's a million quotes that have come my way. My, um, my husband died a few months ago unexpectedly. And you might think, wow, I'm laughing quite a bit considering that. And I, uh, when at the, as I helped create the funeral, I was really asking myself what, and I was with him for 25 years, what is it that, what is it that feels most important to me from our wonderful 25 years together? There were a lot of people at the funeral. My husband used to be a comedian. And so one of the things that I noticed was just community. Yeah. the importance of community and love connection and and I the deeper that I went with what it is that really like the thing about death that's if I dare say beautiful is it really distills things you get rid of a lot of things that you thought matter don't matter anymore at all so love really it really made me curious about what is love and what was so important in my journey with my husband was that every single day we laughed together. Every day there was, we didn't go to bed angry. You know, we we didn't nurse negativity. You know, it's not that we didn't, you know, me especially, I'm a fiery person, but I didn't, I didn't nurse it and I didn't hold on to it. And I really saw that the greatest gift that I could give myself or anybody, period, was just the act of love. To be able to love someone, to also be able to let love in. Sometimes we're good at loving. We're not so good at letting ourselves be loved. It can be hard to be loved because it makes you feel really vulnerable, especially like my husband died. You might think, well, what good was loving? You know, like I got hurt. I got hurt when he died. But I see that without love, what is life? What are we doing all of this for? I I appreciate the juiciness of love. I see, I know I appreciate a beautiful mind. I, beautif- I appreciate beautiful actions. Where is it all coming from? For me, love is the essence of what you and I are talking about, Lee. We're talking about caring for ourselves, caring for each other, caring enough to be awake to our precious lives. Mm. And that's how I'm using the word love. The love of being here present to this very short journey and immersing ourselves in it. And... That's that's really where that comes from. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> it's very, it's beautiful. I mean, everything that we have had the opportunity to connect on, to talk about has just been full. It's been wonderfully full. 
And I appreciate everything that you've shared. And I love the fact that red is your fiery hot color because it's also <laughs> mine too, as you can tell. Um, and remembering to breathe. Not just to, to use the breath as an anchor for the present moment. Mm -hmm. So we're remembering to breathe. Again, you're probably breathing already or you wouldn't have made it to this interview. But it's... We can use the breath as a portal to the heart, to nowness, to being present. You don't have to believe me. I always tell people, please don't believe me. Go, you got to go find out for yourself. This is not a mind thing. It's an experiential thing. Yeah. When you different. notice yourself, and sometimes people don't feel themselves breathing. So you could even put a hand on your belly mm -hmm. if that helps. Because sometimes we need to feel that connection. Like, oh, am I breathing? Does that feel so we can feel the breath coming in at the belly or in the rib cage or the sensations in the nose, mouth, and throat. And all of those things can be what brings us back to a, even a second. A second of nowness can be enough to interrupt our stress yeah. and bring us back to love, yeah. potentially. Love manifests itself in so many ways. As I said to my brother the other day, at this point in my life, I'm only about more love. I'm never about less love. And when I... Check in with things coming up because life is difficult and we're filled with all sorts of challenges in the world. I just remind myself all the time, it's never less love that's going to be the answer for me. I can't speak for anyone else. It's always going to be more love, whatever that means. I love that. More love. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Lee.